Not a long time ago, I had a nightmare. A nightmare that I was dreaming of being a Danganronpa fan. I know, it sounds really horrible and I even considered going to therapy before realizing that no good therapist would want to treat a fan of Danganronpa. Now, a year ago, I introduced my subscribers to something that would change me and the world. And a year ago, I would talk about Danganronpa. Trigger Happy Havoc. And now I want to talk about something that's better. And no, it's not butter. It's this little sequel called Dankenrumpa 2 Goodbye Despair. I'm sorry that you had to see this for a second year in a row, but I really do like Danganronpa, all jokes aside. The original introduced so much to me. It introduced me to adoring visual novels. It introduced a perfect mixture of despair, hope, and weirdness. And it introduced me to what friends are. And today, I'll be talking about what Danganronpa 2 is, which is a near-perfect sequel to the original that elevates everything that was great here and brings it to new heights. Except for Taro Taro. I hate him. One of the weaker aspects of Goodbye Despair would be Jabberwock Island, though it's not exclusive to Goodbye Despair, as you can see it again with Killing Harmony. My issue is with the setting. The atmosphere and the tension of being trapped within the school walls is gone, and instead we're on a tropical island with multiple islands to explore. I don't think I can say much about Jabberwock Island, other than it feeling like a downgrade in most ways. And also, the frame rate takes a serious dip on Switch, which is weird considering that this is a PSP game. It's whatever since this never happens during gameplay, but it's still annoying. And also, you can walk to different islands in the side view Angleland. Why? You can even use a d-pad to instantly go to any of these islands, so I'm struggling to understand why they didn't just make it a menu. Though that said, the story that's found on Jabberwock Island is really cool, though the island itself isn't as important to the story, which does make sense the further you head into the game. But all that said, one thing I have to say is that now that we're on tropical islands, the variety of cases and the special events are so much cooler. And I'm not just saying this because we have Sony in a swimsuit, but... This part of the video has spoilers for the entire story. So, skip now or forever be scared by this pervert. As a 2 indicates, Danganronpa 2 is a sequel to Trigger Happy Havoc, though now it has an all new cast of high schoolers and a story that isn't related to the original, at least for the first few chapters. A common thing that you'll see throughout the game is that your expectations will be broken again and again, and I highly advise going into this game blind, or you can be an idiot and get spoiled. The game opens up in an interesting way, though I don't know if I would say I'd like it more than Trigger Happy Havoc. It's only a big deal if you go into this game completely blind, which I didn't since I'm impatient as fuck. So yeah, the game opens up in these tropical islands with Monomi, which is basically Monokuma if he was horrible. I know I sound harsh, but it's hard to like a character who has a diaper on. And then Monokuma shows up out of nowhere, shocker, and ruins the party with fucking Mono Beast. What the fuck? I thought I was playing Dankin Ropa, not Armored Core. The prologue, Welcome to Dankin Island, Panic at the Heart Throbing School Trip. Wow, that's a mouthful. Opens up with the pretty boy waking you up. It's all good, all things considered, though I feel like it's not as good as Trigger Happy Havoc or Killing Harmony's openings. Those games had incredible openings with a lot of emotional attachment to them. And in retrospective, two falls flat, though you'll see that it rises more than once in nearly every way. While V3 is my personal favorite of the trilogy, 2 does a lot of things better. Chapter 1, Destination Despair is great, as this is where shit really hits a fan. Like I said before, Monokuma shows up, and now it's time for the students to kill each other. Yay! So exciting and surprising, am I right? Anyways, big boy Byakuya tries to prevent the killing game by setting up a party, and when everything seems okay, the developers throw fan service at us. And for some reason, it's essential to finding out who the murderer is. Also, what the fuck? I liked Nankajio before, but now, he's fucking insane. Chapter 2, Sea and Punishment, Sin and Coconuts Fun fact, when I was writing the script and noticed the name, I thought this was a reference to the hit N64 game Sin and Punishment. This was before I remembered that it was a common phrase and that I'm an idiot. So, if you like girls in swimsuits, then holy shit, this is the chapter for you. Personally, I'm going for Chiaki here. Oh, and on the murdering side, Pico Pico takes Miharu out and goes crazy with an anime mask. Oh, we also learned that Fuyu Hiko actually knew Pico Pico before the events of the killing game, and... That they love each other? While she's getting executed, he steps in. Holy shit, I could cry at this beautiful romance. Getting cut short. Chapter 3, Trapped by the Ocean Scent. Is it really a Kudaka game if the third case isn't good at all? Has a ton of flaws? Is just stupid? Yeah, this is the case for Danganronpa 2. It fell flat for the most part, though, other than Hiyoko dying and ruining her character development, I thought this chapter was just okay. There's a despair disease that makes people the opposite of what they do, so it's kind of cool I guess. Not much else to say about it, other than 
more fan service, I guess. Chapter 4, Do Ultimate Robots Dream of Clockwork? This chapter is fucking insane for one and one reason only. Nekumoro turns into a robot and dies shortly afterwards. If we ignore how about shit crazy that part is, then I think the rest of the chapter is actually really, really good. The twist that's revealed is insane to think about, and it got me so hard when I realized what was going on during the trial. I fucking hate you, Nagito. Fuck you. Besides Nagito being an asshole, there's another huge revelation that we learned in this trial. And eventually, we learned something about Chiaki. She was a great character that I loved so much, and I was heartbroken by the twist later in the story, where she's revealed to be an imposter. So, Danganronpa fans, there's something I need to confess, so sit down. Please don't kill me, but out of the trilogy, I think that Goodbye Despair has the weakest ending out of all- <laughs> It's not that it's bad, because I really enjoyed the game and the ending. I just think that having Jungle being the big bad again is kind of stupid. I remember reading somewhere that instead, Sonia should have been the antagonist, and all this was to punish the ultimate despair for their crimes against humanity. I would have loved that a lot more, but alas, I'm not a writer, so I can't say it would have worked. So, overall, I really adored Danganronpa 2. It was a great sequel that expands on the original while closing many mysteries that we had with the original story. The characters feel better, the revelations are insane, and Nagito? Well, he's Nagito. The ending is lovely too, with it showing that the Danganronpa survivors have a bright future ahead of them. But by despair, I would have to argue that it has some of the best characters in the entire franchise. I mean, Nagito's there can't really go above and beyond him. While unfortunately there are some icky characters, I would have to say that overall the characters in Dikuropa 2 are a huge improvement. First of all, there's Hajime Hinata, a protagonist that completely blew away my expectations out of the water. Chiaki is amazing and the best character in the entire franchise because 1. She's cute. 2. She's a gamer girl. 3. Her design is immaculate. 4. Her backstory and the twist makes Chiaki an infinitely more interesting character. It makes you cry every time you think about it and I curl it up in a ball every time I think about it. I will kill you if you say anything negative about her, I swear to god. In sequels to much beloved games, there's a lot that one expects. One might expect new worlds, new ideas, or even new gameplay ideas. Some sequels succeed and others fail. In this regard, I would have to say that Danganronpa 2 absolutely succeeds and goes above and beyond, especially with the class trial. They've been reworked a bit, and now they have a very different feeling, starting with how they're paced. Now they're made to be much longer, and there are two parts within each trial, and honestly, I love it. It makes the trials feel like more like an event, and they're able to pack a whole lot more. Other than the length, these trials are pretty similar, other than consent. During trials, you can vouch for another character and back them up with evidence. It's a pretty cool feature though, I have to ask, why is it called consent? Feels like agree would work much better, though on second thought it might be to introduce anime fans to what consent is. Class trials in general have been improved slightly with new bibs and bobs in different places. Hangman's Gambit returns and it still makes me want to kill myself. Panic talk action comes back and replaces the bullet time in battle and I got nothing to say except for I hate it. It makes no sense in Dink and Ropa and if I wanted to play a rhythm game I'd play Taku no Tsushin Rhythm Festival for the Nintendo Switch. It's a pretty cool game by the way. Oh, and I almost forgot to talk about Rebuttal Showdown, which is a one-on-one -on -one fight between you and another character. It's pretty cool since now you get to use a sword. Trigger Happy Havoc 0? Goodbye Despair 1. The final thing to be added into Class Trials are Logic Dive and, like Hangman's Gambit, why? It doesn't add anything to the mystery, and it feels like a cheap way to try to make the Class Trials more unique, and I feel like it fails in that regard. Denkenrupa 2 Goodbye Despair is a nearly perfect sequel and expands on that story while also being an incredible experience by itself. There were a few parts that muddied my experience, but overall, I adored Goodbye Despair, and the trials were so good, and the character even better. Goodbye Despair is a great conclusion to the mysteries of Hope's Peak Academy game-wise. Danganronpa 3's Despair arc is great because it gives us a backstory that makes this cast so saddening. Thank you to everyone who joined me and viewed this episode. Next year, you can expect... I will tell you. You guys can figure that out on your own. Matthew is out of here!